And uh, if you have a question for student athletes or coach, just your name, your media affiliation. Also, uh, no recording uh, with cell phones or, or cameras uh, when talking about our press conference. At this time, we welcome the champions of the MEAC and the uh, Howard Bison and Seth Towns and Bryce Harris both scoring 16 points tonight and what was a hard-fought game. A Bison found themselves down by 17 points but were able to get back into the game before falling 71-68. Questions for our student-athletes. Let's go to the second row on the aisle. Hey, Bryce, Gene Wong with the Washington Post. Could you take us through that comeback in the final minutes there? You got it to, to one, and then you had looks for threes at the end. Um, kind of the, the mindset going into that, knowing you were down 13, or down a bunch and had to rally. Um, to be honest with you, this is a resilient basketball team. So the fact that we did that, I'm honestly, honestly not shocked. Um, that's just a true testament to who we are, not only as basketball players, but our character. Uh, you know, I mean, I can't even say, I can sit here and talk all day, but like, that's just who we are. Like that run which is a testament to everything we went through during the season, you know? So um, honestly, it just came down to playing together, being connected, um, make sure we stay connected. <clears throat> and that was the mindset during that run. Other questions for our student athletes? We'll go back to the second row there. Hey, said Gene Wong again with the Washington Post. Could, kind of peeking back off that, to the resiliency of this team, just how much did that kind of carry you through this game and then through the season where you, had, you faced adversity? Yeah, we, um, <clears throat> I mean, we, we, I think, faced more adversity than, than any team that I've ever been a part of this year, um, you know, with, with injury in particular. So, uh, and then, not not just with injury, but um, with you know dropping games that, that we didn't expect to, and um, how how we had to fight back and 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 come together as a group. Um, you know, it's it's a testament to who we've been all season, and um, you know I I just couldn't be more proud proud of this group. Let's go to the third row on the aisle. Mike Petralia, CLNS Media. Bryce, can you take us through the last three minutes? What did you think was the key to making that late charge? And, and follow up to that would be the three great looks that you guys got at the, the, in the closing seconds. Um, honestly, it all just came down to being tough and hunting, as we would say. You know, doing our AGBs, we did at a very, very high level. Good things happen when you do that. As some would say the basketball gods. You know, uh, they look after you when you do the right things um, and go about trying to win the right way. Uh, so that's really what that push was. Um, you know, it didn't go our way at the end, but for that for that stretch, that's the only concern we had. You know, everything else will take care of itself after you just hunt. Let's go back to the second round. For, for both you guys, even though the outcome didn't go the way you wanted, just the season overall, you guys have talked about changing the culture of the program. Just how were you guys able to do that? And what did this season mean to help foster that change? Bryce? Um, <clears throat> honestly, like, just to reiterate, um, it, comes down, yeah, it comes down to basketball, but also comes down to having connections with who we are, not only as teammates, but human beings. Um, you know, playing on a basketball team, is one of the more beautiful things in life because it gives you a group of brothers who have a common goal and it allows you to have a deeper connection past just being a teammate, you know? So what we speak a lot about is having brothers, you know? You wanna have brothers. You're gonna go through things with your brothers. You're gonna have good moments. You're gonna have bad moments. You're gonna have moments where you're mad at your brother, your brother's mad at you, but you guys have to go through the Rocky Mountain and get over it. So, um, especially to reach, to reach that common goal. So, I mean, you know, in a nutshell, that's basically what that was. Um, you know, just understanding each other, you know, understanding our whys, 
you know, why we play the game, um, you know, who introduced us to the game, what's carrying us through any type of adversity that we have, whether it's basketball-wise or in life in general, and just carry on and be able to lean on one another. Seth? Yeah, I, I think we had several moments throughout the season um, where we really had to look ourselves in the mirror. And I think that seeped into the fabric of who we were, um, who we are. And, um, you know, I, I think that that shows up in the last three minutes of this game. Um, and, you know, furthermore, I think this will show up in the rest of our lives and, and how we proceed as men. So um, it's just a, a, a testament to, you know, who who each of these individuals are on this team and the culture that's that's been built here. One more question for our student athletes at first row. Uh, Travis Williams, HBCU All-Stars. Uh, Bryce and Seth, I had op I've had opportunity to watch you guys pretty much – uh, Bryce for the past few years and Seth you've been at numerous institutions let's talk about this entire HBCU experience the you put the world on notice by how how black college basketball is represented at the highest level so just tell us about the experience of playing HBCUs but more importantly letting folks know around the country that we have some of the best in black college basketball Seth yeah, um, I I can say that it's a it's a true honor uh, to 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 play for an HBCU. Um, it's you know one of the more empowering experiences that I've ever had, and um, you know it 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 goes so much deeper than basketball than uh, than you know how we how we perform on the court. It, it shows up in the spirit that you see um, in you know, who we, who we become as men. That, that's, that's so much of why we had these breakthrough moments as a team, uh, so much of why we look so deeply at ourselves in the mirror is because of how much it matters, like how, how, how ingrained uh, this has been like in our identity. And so, you know, we're, we're playing for something that's so much bigger than us, and I think we all understand that. Third annual HBCU All Star Game too. Thank you, thank you. Uh, that that'll be it for the, our student athletes. Uh, Bryce, Seth, thank you so much for your time, and uh, really enjoyed watching you play here this evening. It was uh, a fantastic year for your group, champions of the MEAC. Something to be proud of. Uh, thank you again. All right, uh, you're, you're free to, to walk off the stage. Let's open up the floor. We only have just a few minutes here with, with Coach. Uh, questions uh, for Coach Kenneth Blakeney. Let's go to the first row on the end. Coach Kendershot, HBCU Sports. Um, take us to that last possession, and what exactly did you tell your team before they went out on the floor? Before that last possession? Yeah, first I'd like to give uh, thanks and praise to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Um, the, the last play, we had two actually two different plays drawn up. Um, we had a play if they were if we were two points down, and we had a play if we were three points down, especially with the time that was going in. So we wanted to try to get Jordan Harris in a play called shovel um, to really push the tempo, try to get as deep as he could with Seth Towns trailing, and flip it back to Seth for hopefully an open three point shot. Um, I think we didn't get the ball down as far as we wanted to do. And Seth was a little bit further out probably than he wanted. It was comfortable shooting. Uh, but we, in saying that, we still were able, I think, to get three great looks um, at the basket. Um, but, uh, you know, sometimes the basketball gods uh, are with you and sometimes they're not. The second row on the end. Hey, Coach Gene Wong with the Washington Post. Just, can you speak to the resiliency of the team during that comeback? You're down 13 with four and a half minutes left, and how that kind of carried you throughout moments in the regular season, whereas Seth alluded to there was there was moments of adversity. Yeah, this was um, certainly one of the most challenging years that I've had in basketball, and certainly as a head coach. Um, when you look at our team, and I don't know what the number is tonight, but before the game, we were at 82 games missed from guys in our rotation. 
And with that, there was never any continuity with this group um, until pretty much the last probably seven or eight games um, where we had, unfortunately, the, the continuity because guys were out. So we were able to just kind of play with the group of guys that we had. Um, and there were times this year that was really, really dark for our group. Um, and I, I think, like, the emergence of Seth as a leader, as a vocal leader, as, as an emotional leader, we play a style of basketball in, in, in our culture. If, if there is no leadership and if our team isn't a player-driven team, um, we're not going to have the type of success in the year that, you know, potentially we could have. And Seth emerging as a leader and uh, on the court, off the court, emotionally and very vocal, I thought really connected us um, for that last part of the season. We're only allowed to 10 minutes with the Howard Bison, so unfortunately that'll be it uh, for our press conference. Uh, second straight trip to the NCAA tournament for Howard. Uh, Coach, congratulations on a wonderful season.